This should be our last video for this lecture and I've jumped back to Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to do some layer opacity, layer blending modes, and layer effects. Um, but I'm going to show you in the document we've been working on and I also grabbed this image of the Eiffel Tower. Again, it's from the stock images for the class and so if you want to pause the video and go over and download that before you get started, you can launch that. Um, we're going to focus on the ice cream first and then when we're done um, I'll show you some alternate layer blending mode options with the Eiffel Tower image. And so first things first, so you can affect the opacity of an image by selecting a layer on the layers panel, let me zoom in here, and there's an opacity and a fill slider and you can slide either one of these to the left and it will affect the opacity. You can see that now I can see through that pink layer, if we zoom out. It's not as harsh, and so if I wanted this kind of comically bright, obnoxious pink background, then that might work, or I could lower the opacity so I can still see it, but I can also see the image behind it, and that might be something that works for what you're doing for your project. You can also affect the layer blending mode, and so if you select a layer, I'm going to put this back up to 100% because I kind of like to use layer blending modes at 100% and then after I see the effect then I can decide if I want to lessen the effect by lowering the blending um, the opacity. And so if I try to apply a layer blending mode to the pink lines, um, however, whichever option I choose, it's going to affect the way that the pink lines layer interacts with all the layers beneath it. And so where the pink overlaps the ice cream cone is how it's going to interact with the ice cream cone layer. But where the pink overlaps any of the background, it's how it's going to interact with the background layer. And so if you just click through these, you can see that different things happen. I'll explain a few of them, but we will cover this in, in greater detail. My favorite is the overlay. I usually use that a lot. It kind of makes the, the image bright and pop, and it may work for what you're doing. So one common thing to use it for is to affect the color of the image. And so if you had, let's undo that. Let's put it back on normal. If you wanted to change the color of the entire image, let's say this background image, you could create a new layer and you could make a selection of the whole layer. You could also do Command A for select all. And you could choose to edit fill, which we already know how to choose, right? But we've been using content aware. If you choose a color, let's say you choose, let's do yellow. And you fill the entire thing with yellow. Obviously you can't see through it, but if you change the layer blending mode to hue or color, you can change the color of the entire image without actually changing the color of the image. So my image is now yellow, but it's not. It's just the way that my solid yellow layer is interacting with the layers beneath it. You can change it to color, which gives you a different effect. I think the color in this case probably looks like a better option. But it's a quick way to change the color of the image. We will learn lots of ways to do that throughout the semester. I would say that way is probably not the best way, but it is a quick way to do that. Let's get rid of that layer since we don't need it. Okay, going back to your other layers, um, you may want to change the, the interaction between the pink layer and the layers behind it, or maybe you just want to lower the opacity so that you're still getting the effect of the squiggles, but you don't have to have them in such a bright or obnoxious way. So maybe you want to take the ice cream layer and do that overlay so it becomes bright and vibrant, but now it's kind of standing out too much. So maybe on that layer as well, you kind of lower the opacity. Um, and then you're creating this effect that you didn't have to begin with, right? If I turn the eyeball off of my grouping, I can see the original um, image, which kind of looks a little flat and washed out at this point. But if I turn both of my other layers on, now I've created a composition that I might want to use in a project. The last thing that I want to talk about, so I want to undo these changes because I want to talk about layer effects and I don't want... Um, I don't want the layer effects to be diminished by seeing them in combination with the blending modes, but you by all means could do that. Maybe I want to create a funky effect on, on the ice cream cone so I apply a filter to it or I do something to the rest of the image. My first step, I might want to try using these layer effects. At the bottom of the panel, if I select a layer and choose the effects, you can choose any one of these. And so maybe I want to choose, um, let's do Let's do bevel and emboss because I have no idea how it's going to do it on, on the squiggly lines. So, oh, hang on. I have a selection made. You don't want to have a selection made when you do that. You just want it to apply to the, to the layer. And so we'll choose bevel and emboss. And so you can see it's trying to bevel the entire shape. So maybe bevel and emboss isn't the, the greatest option for this. You can click through and see, 
see if it does anything to your liking. So I've, I've increased the depth on my bevel and emboss a lot so you can actually see the texture. And maybe you like that, maybe that works for what you're working for and you hit okay and say I like that, but I wanna lower the opacity a little bit and you get some texture. You could also apply it, let's hit undo until that goes away. It's not undo it step backwards because you can only actually undo once in Photoshop. But maybe instead you want to put like a drop shadow on your ice cream cone. And so you hit the drop down menu, you choose drop shadow, and then you can apply a drop shadow to your image. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of all the different settings because you can see that different versions of Photoshop have different options available. But in this case, I do want to point out that there's a blending mode for a lot of these features. And if it's set to multiply, you don't always see what you want to see. And so my recommendation is always to put the blending mode at normal so you can see as much as you can see of the image and then um, you can make adjustments. And so I'm going to make the opacity 100% so I can see the drop shadow and increase the distance. You can increase the spread and the size of your drop shadow and you can do different things. Now because my ice cream layer is beneath the, the pink squiggly layer, I'm not seeing these changes as much as I want. So I might say, eh, that doesn't work for me. But maybe we decide instead to put the drop shadow on the pink layer. You can always experiment with what works for you. And so we can change the blending mode back to normal, make the opacity 100%. You can see it's kind of adding some depth to the picture. I'm going to make it bigger. And you can increase the spread if you want to here. See, it's, it's kind of flipping um, to be nice or not nice. And so I'm going to leave it at 0%. Um, but you can increase the distance from where it's at and you can do different things with the picture. Um, one fun thing that you might want to try is this quality down here. Um, you can click through it and it has different effects to the way it applies your drop shadow. So that one to me kind of looks cool and neon, so I might select OK, but it's almost overpowering. So maybe I'll go back to the, the opacity and lower that. Or you might even want to just put your ice cream layer in the front. And we haven't learned it yet, but there are ways that you can get rid of this background. And so then your ice cream is kind of prominent and it sits in front of everything else. Um, and your cool, funky background could sit behind it and you don't even need to, to lower the opacity too much and you can still keep that bright color. Okay, I wanna show you some better options for the layer blending modes because not everything works for every image. And so we did the content aware fill and they said it's not always gonna work. And that's the same idea with you know, applying effects to your layers here. It might not always work. But one thing that I do think is pretty cool is the ability to change like the background in an image or to change the color in an image. And so we've already done that once, but if you wanted to make this like a grayscale image, you could create a new layer, Command A or Control A to select all, and you could fill it with a color. And that color could be like gray. And obviously you can't see through the gray, but with the layer blending modes, you could change the color of the image and you could quickly get um, a grayscale image, or you could even do like an off gray image, right? So if we go back to layer one, I still have it selected. We could use edit fill with a color. Whoops. Make sure you actually click on it, color. And then you could say, well, what if I just did like an off, maybe I want it to look more like sepia tone. You could find like a brownie, orange, yellow color. When you fill it, it gives you a, a unique effect. Another thing that I really like is the, the darker color, lighter color option. And so I'm going to duplicate the background layer. And let's think about this for a second. So I want to keep the darker color or the lighter color. And so let's make another layer and let's fill it. So Command A or Control A to select all and edit fill. And let's do a color and let's do I don't know, this funky blue color. So if I turn, let's put my image on the top. Um, if I convert this to be a grayscale image, this, this background copy, if I desaturate it, um, it would become black and white and it would have a clear distinction between the blacks in the image and the whites in the image. And so if I wanted to do that, there are lots of ways to do that. Right now I'm gonna choose image adjustments and I am going to choose hue and saturation and I'm going to drag the saturation all the way to the left to get all the color out of the image. You don't need to take notes on that, it's not a requirement at this point. Um, when you choose the drop down, there is a lighter color and a darker color. 
And if you select them, different things happen. And so right now I have the background copy layer selected. And when I choose darker color, it keeps the darker color from my image. And then whatever happens to be lighter than the color beneath it, the blue color, it disappears and allows you to see through. If I keep the lighter color, it does the opposite. And so whatever color is lighter in my background image, I'm going to keep that color and then um, the darker colors are going to be replaced by whatever's beneath it and it creates kind of a cool effect. Now you could take this a step further, so let's turn the blending mode off. Um, what you can do is you could make this image just black and white. So instead of it being shades of gray, you could go to image and adjustments and maybe we go to brightness and contrast. So there's lots of ways to do everything, but we can increase the contrast. Make it brighter. The brighter we make it, the, the less black there is in the image, or the less gray there is. You could also do like levels and things like that, but for now, I'll just you know play around. Now if I did the same thing and I did the darker color, it gets more of the gray out of the image. So it's saying that some of these grays are actually more intense than the layer beneath it. And if I did the lighter color, you can see that there's less gray in the picture, and this actually kind of looks pretty cool for me. So maybe I would use that as part of my project. Okay, that wraps up our lecture on layers. What's more important than these kind of effects at the end are the ability to create, label, organize, um, show and hide, lock and unlock layers. So focus on that part of the lecture. But you can also apply these kind of cool effects to your layers. Um, if you have any questions, obviously email me. Um, I'm happy to answer them or attend office hours either online or on campus.